Kelly. Everybody thinks they're going to get a chance to punch some Nazi in the face at Normandy. I used to think I was going to get a chance to do it. Now I realize I'm going to be eating jello. Come on, we're men, we're not pinatas. To be honest, I'm not sure he really is a dog. Please don't take a turn to negative town. What are you talking about? Who's getting negative? You're unbelievable. And boom, we are live. Welcome, folks, to the American Movie Podcast. If you've never been here before, do not forget to subscribe. I go through books, documentaries, uh, movies, Netflix series, all that stuff. Um, I'm really into this book that I just read, uh, A Crack in Creation. And A Crack in Creation is pretty much talking about CRISPR. And what CRISPR is is a gene editing mechanism that people found, most notably Jennifer Dowdena, Dowdena, uh, and they found it by happenstance. And so the book is pretty much, it's pretty much set up into two sections, pretty much the nascent stage of how CRISPR came to be and the, the forerunners of this technology and biology. And then the second half is what's to come, what are the practical uses, what are the ethics behind it, uh, and what should we do in order to create the best case scenario for everybody with this uh, new technology that we don't really know what, what's going to happen with it. So CRISPR is this mechanism that they found within bacteria, and bacteria are very, very smart, and they've evolved in order to beat viruses. So they found this, I think it's viral DNA inside of a Inside of a little bacteria, okay? So I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to explain this. So there's like a little itty-bitty genetic marker within this bacteria. And it's just kind of like a punch card. And it recognizes that this viral or this virus was here and it knows the punch card for it. So if it comes again, it can eradicate it from, and from itself and move on with its bacterial life. So they found this mechanism accidentally... And so they captured this mechanism, and it doesn't only, it's, they used it, they found multiple uh, CRISPR ones, and there's like Cas2, Cas3, Cas4, but Cas9 is the protein that actually is the best suited for what they want to use it for, and that's altering DNA sequences in order to create, let's, let's say a healthy, a healthier person. So, uh, so they can do this in different ways, they can do it in vivo and ex vivo, and they can change it. Uh, in vivo is inside the body, so they would inject it locally to wherever the thing is, um, but it usually works best with uh, ex vivo, which is with like blood transfusions and blood diseases, blood-borne diseases, like uh, I think sickle cell anemia was one referenced in there. So you can alter this and cure people with this mechanism that they found inside bacteria and it doesn't have to be a virus that they remove. It just needs to be a select portion of the DNA um, band. So this was incredible. So the first part of it, I found she was just kind of giving you her background and her story. And kind of like it's kind of like an autobiography. And it reads like that. And then the meat and potatoes of about it's a quick read, too. You can read it in a day. It's a couple hours. It's only 275 pages or something like that. So you can read it pretty quickly. And I highly recommend this. Uh, it was really fascinating. So the end of it was uh, the ethics and what's to come and the practical uses and the ways in which they're going to be able to use it. So she was, she was talking about uh, how they're going to be able to put human parts or cultivate human parts, such as like the pancreas or the heart or the liver, inside of pigs for donors. So they're going to be able to somehow create this environment where this where these organs will prosper and be suitable for human consumption uh as an alternative for their faulty organs. So that was just mind blowing in general. Okay, so you're gonna have a pig pancreas if you want. So uh and she also brought about the ethics of recency or recent extinctions within um, the animal kingdom that we caused. Do we have the ethical obligation to bring back these animals? So one of them was the woolly mammoth. And another one was the, I believe, the carrier pigeon, I think. I didn't even know those were extinct. But uh, so the woolly mammoth would be amazing. Um, 
so they have uh, pretty much, uh, it would be like Jurassic Park. I think she equates it to Jurassic Park either in an interview or in this book. I can't remember. But uh, so it would be like that. So you, they, and she also goes into like the previous stuff of genetic splicing and how rudimentary that was in comparison to the precision of CRISPR-Cas9. So it was an incredible book. It was blo- it was mind blowing, and there were so many practical uses within it because it's it can work with um, mammalian genomes like uh, pigs, humans, mammals, pretty much, and then uh, plant genomes. And I didn't realize this, but plant genomes are way bigger than our genomes. I had no idea. I thought genomes were complex, and the more complex the organism, the more complex the genome. No, it actually is reversed. So you get to see there was so much insight and so much cool information inside of this that I'm not going to be able to even pretend to give it all to you because it's so it was so chock full of all sorts of cool insights inside of this. So it was really, really fascinating and su- in such a short, accessible way. So I highly recommend you check out A Crack in Creation. And it's uh, written by Jennifer Dowdena. And what's funny is DNA is in the last bit of uh, her name. You can't really see it. The text is a little small, but Dowdena. So anyways, I do recommend this. There's, uh, the book is down below in the description, and you can also get it on Audible. And if you don't have Audible, you get a free trial of Audible down below as well. It's a free 30 days. You get two books, so one of them could be a crack in creation if you want to give it a crack. And uh, so thank you so much for watching that was a crack in creation i love this book it was really really just you i didn't want to put it down i read it in a day like you can read it in a few hours i highly recommend it so uh if you know nothing about it too you don't need to know anything about it really uh because she instills enough in there for it so i highly 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 recommend this book um, so thank you so much let me know in the comment section down below if you want to read it or if you have read it and If you want to talk about it, I would love to because this is so cool to me. There's so many implications that we can use this for that would be positive. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. This has been Matthew Benjamin with the American Movie Podcast. Do not forget to subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. I go through movies, books, all this stuff. I got a big book coming that I've been trying to get through. It's called Behave. It's taken forever because it is a humongous 750 pager. It's taken so long it's neurobiology so look out for that too it's coming soon i'm close i'm close i had to take a break so i jumped over to crack crack and creation so thank you so much until next time thank you folks bye 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 round one come on oh whoa hey come on come on come on kelly everybody thinks they're gonna get a chance to punch some nazi in the face at normandy i used to think i was gonna get a chance to do it now i realize i'm gonna be eating jello Come on, we're men, we're not pinatas. To be honest, I'm not sure he really is a dog. Please don't take a turn to negative town. What are you talking about?